Well, here we are. This just got dropped off this morning. Uh, actually, about a few minutes ago by the by the trucking company. So we're going to get this new Yoder 640 out and going and uh, see what it looks like. So we've got the Yoder unloaded. We've uh, hauled it around to the back. It's a uh, frosty, uh, about 10 degrees outside today, so it's going to be just a little bit chilly. But we've uh, hauled everything around here. I unloaded everything previously just to make the weight a little bit lighter to getting it back here. But now we need to assemble this. We're ready to do the initial burn in. So we're going to take and move the damper plate all the way back. Make sure this the cooking grate is uh, or the fire pot is is seated well. Now all the grates have been removed. The next thing to do is add some pellets. We're only going to use these pellets just for the initial burn in. So we're going to add enough for that. Once that's taken care of, it's important to add about an eighth of a cup into the burn pot cooking thing directly. So with that, we'll turn this to on and press start. Initial temperature is set to 350 and we can see that it's going to start climbing here. You can see the lines going up letting us know it's heating up. So now we're told it will take three to four minutes before we get the, the ignition to actually take place where we start to see the fire. So this is from uh, st basically from off the off the pallet into the backyard and uh, ready for the initial burn. This is by far, uh, uh, even though it's my first Yoder, this is definitely not my first uh, smoker, as uh, my daughter's holding the camera. Actually, it's completely surrounded by other uh, pieces of cooking equipment here in the backyard. All right, we're for the initial cook on this Yoder. We're going to be cooking uh, chicken. I'm also going to be throwing some ribs on as well. So I've. Uh, uh, a lot of people like to have this type of food, so I've got some neighbors who've uh, contributed some meats here they'd like me to have cook up today as well with this. So, to start off with, I've got a five gallon pot here. I've got about two and a half gallons of water in it, and I've got two and a half cups of salt. My standard recipe for a brine, just a simple brine for, for poultry, is about a cup of salt per gallon of water. I know other people like to mix it weaker, stronger, whatnot, but I've got very cold water here. And since how it's outside right now, it is currently about five degrees out there. It'll keep this nice and cold so I can do the brining out there. I don't have to make room in the refrigerator for this big pot. But it's important the salt be completely dissolved in the water because if the salt is not dissolved in the water, it'll settle and will not uh, marinate the chicken or brine the chicken well. The chicken's going to get about two hours of brining. So we're going to once we've got this mixed here, which looks like we've got this mixed. The salt is now dissolved into the water. We've got our brine solution ready. We're going to add these chickens. We want to make sure that the, the, the chickens themselves fill up with the water on the inside. So we get a good brine. We don't want them to necessarily float. These chickens have been thoroughly thawed out in the fridge so that they're ready for this. We've got uh, five chickens we're going to do here. That Spacious yoder though it should uh, should only take up a small amount on the grill give us some room for the for the ribs The ribs are going to only get about a 30 minute brine. I'm not going to show that portion here These are going to get about two hours, and then we'll uh, take them out to the grill I'll season them up and take them out Back, You can see we've got uh, five chickens here. We've got two baby back ribs I've just pulled them out of the out of the water and I've drained them off and then I've and I've uh, dried them all off so that they're nice and dry. In fact, that's the main rule, is I want all the water to go off. Now, some people like to rinse their meat after they pull it out of the brine. I personally, after I've dried it off, I think we're just fine that way. So I'm gonna start off here, is I take some, uh, just some melted butter, and I put this here. I just wanna quickly dab everything down with a little bit of this. This will help hold all the rubs on that we're gonna be adding to this here, and momentarily. The goal is just to simply have a just a little bit of oil on top of everything. This will 
allow the rubs to settle in and stick to the meat. It'll also help with browning a bit later um, as, it, as we crank the temperature up a bit to, to put a little bit of a, especially on the chicken, to put a little bit of a crust on them. Um, it just helps them to keep them from drying out just a little bit. And I'm going to do, after I get this on, I've got a couple of different uh, spices I'm going to add to this. Pretty simple. Nothing complex. It doesn't take a whole lot to add a lot of flavor to this. We want the, the meat and the, uh, the sauces, or the, the meat and the smoke to what's going to come through on this. So the rib, rubs here, the, the ribs, I've got my own blend of rub that I make with some chilies and, and, uh, and sugar and salts. And I'm just going to sprinkle this generously across the ribs. I'm just about out of this. It's about time to make some more of my rub. And once that's uh, coated nicely, I like a nice thick coating. It'll soak into it. Great. Set that down. And then I come back across the top of that with some just some black pepper. We'll add a little bit more as the cooking progresses. It soaks in just a little bit. On the chicken, I've got another rub here. I'm just going to liberally coat these. I don't care if it spills off a little bit. This is just a bit of sugar, some brown sugar, some other spices that are in here. So there's no salt in this at all. The salt's going to, any of this uh, savory is going to come completely from the brining that we've already done. The goal of this is just to add a little bit more flavor and have it soak into that skin a little bit. So I've had the yogurt outside right now. It's been going for about uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes. It's just about up to temperature. We're going to take these outside, set these out there, and we'll load up the, the, the grill, and we'll go from there. Okay. Alright, we're just going to check this out here. Our meat right now, 35 degrees on the chicken. Um, our yoder is up to 200 degrees, up to temp. We're going to open the grill up here. It's been running now for about 40 minutes. 121 on the grill plate here at the moment. Now it's time to take and just load this baby up. We're going to pick these chickens up, just place them in here, try to keep as much of that uh, rub as we can on them. Beautiful. Now we're going to take add the grill grate back in. We're going to lose a lot of temperature as we do this. but can't be helped. So we'll take these ribs now and put these things right up here. This will run the ribs a little bit higher right now. Beautiful. So now we've got a loaded up grill. Take my gloves off for a moment here and let's uh, insert a probe into this chicken here and add another probe here to our rack. Set that gently closed and we'll uh, see you as we we'll have the cooking progresses here. Here we are, it's been about two and a half hours. Grill's maintaining a temperature about around 240, 250. You can see the temperature of the meat is uh, climbed to about 124 degrees so we're just past that uh, time when the the meat's going to take in all the smoke it's going to take and now it's time to uh, baste the meat a little bit you can see the chickens are starting to get a little bit of color on them looking great in here and the ribs are looking fantastic so I've got a little bit of sauce I'm going to take uh, my jalapeno sauce that I've got here and just going to mop down the ribs Put a little bit of juice back into them, and the sauce will start to collect a little bit of the uh, of the or the of the smoke, which will further enhance the flavor of these ribs here for tonight. You now those chilies and uh, jalapenos here just and uh, mixing with this jelly, apple jelly, just really uh, add a lot of flavor. So it's going to just perk that right up with that rib sauce or the rub that I've put into it. 
just going to make this absolutely heaven. All right. Just about enough there. All right. Beautiful. So these got about another hour, about an hour and a half, hour and a half left. We're going to bring the heat up a little bit once we get to about 130 degrees. And we'll uh, brown everything up and then we'll be able to pull it off and uh, should be delicious. So we'll catch you about then. We've each reached the final temperature, 178 degrees on the chickens and the ribs now have reached their 220 degrees. I've got them all wrapped up so the ribs are over here now. Just to show you what the caramelization looks like on these. They're beautiful in here. They need to rest for about uh, 15 minutes before we eat them. Chickens are just beautiful. Got a nice golden crusty skin on them that tears apart really easy. Um, rid, I just barely put the odor into into, uh, into cool down mode. So, but this looks really great. And we're anxious. Right, so here we are. You can see we've, I've just taken the rib here and cut it off just a little bit. And you can tell we've got uh, good smoke all the way in. And the ribs themselves um, slice nicely. But, uh, oh yeah. They're just a little bit of bite, but they slice very well done. Now we got to see. Come have a come have a bite here. Step up. Come on. Everybody's afraid here. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I was being nice. All right, go for it. First bite off the yoder. How is it? Mmm. All right, let's try. It's not the polite to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> Let's check the check the chicken now. Mm. All right, so here we are on the chicken. Got a nice crispy outer edge. Chicken slice is very nice. Cut into a quarter here. Oh yeah. Let me pull that apart. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nice pink smoke ring in there. Oh yes. Look All the juice is right juice. there. Oh, I gotta. Mmm. Yep. Perfect. Not too mushy. Perfect bite to it. Mmm. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Excellent. So have to say for the first time grilling on the yoder, doing ribs and chicken at the same time. Turned out perfect, foolproof. Yeah, the, uh, the grill's gone through a shutdown mode and it's back down to being uh, cooled down. Soon I'll be able to put the grill cover on it. But this is a thing of beauty. The grates have now been uh, burnt in. Got uh, well charred. It's cool to the touch here, which is just perfectly. I'll clean it up a little bit later and put the grill co uh, cover back over the top of it. But uh, this thing is looking forward to this, giving us years and years of uh, quality food. If anybody's got any questions, this is uh, definitely definitely a great addition to the, the my collection of cookers and smokers. Uh, by far, this is top of the line. But I just want to give a shout out to Craig at Gourmet Grills and Heritage Safe in Boise, Idaho. Called him just uh, four days ago and ordered this, and he had it on a truck that uh, the next day. Shipped off to me freight down here to Utah, and I arrived just in time for us the day after uh, New Year's for our uh, cook off you know, cookout here at home. But uh, this is an amazing machine, and I'm glad to have it.